Hi there, welcome to the Noah Presgrove case. Today we're focusing on Jack Newton and another text which is mentioned in the past. We're looking back at it now with what we've learned in recent time and making comparisons to the private interview of Caden Pressey, what he witnessed and stated at the time of the party, such as on Saturday and beyond. Um, I understand people have said all the lies and BS need to be tied up, need to be organised and then separated from the actual truth. So then you got a clear split and you know what's what. But honestly, it's just not possible to do just yet because there probably is still more lies ongoing, which may not have been discovered yet. But whether you're aware or not, at least to me, I'm going to be revealing more inconsistencies today. Because whilst some interviews and points and findings may have been done in the past, they weren't always released in the moment. So there has been a delay with time. But now, given with what's been learned, can reflect back and see what else is a problem. What else is troublesome? Is there any more suspicion within those that people were suspicious of to begin with. Is it worse now? So welcome to those watching this live premiere, if you're currently here. That's what we're gonna be doing today. And for those watching on Catch Up, welcome in advance. The order is, I'm gonna show you the screenshots first of the text messages um, from the point of view of a different individual this time, communicating with Jack Newton, and it's from the past. Some of you will be familiar with most or some of the text messages. I might have covered it as well in a past video, but I didn't have as much of an understanding back then and I didn't have counterpoints either. I do now, so that's why it's important to look at. I also have some additional slides just for background effect and so it's more closer to the theme of today instead of it just being a, a boring blank white screen all the time. So I'm making some adjustments along the way. And yeah, for those that are watching live, share your thoughts and opinions in the live chat box on the right hand side of the screen. And if you wanna drop a comment down below, feel free to do so. If by the end of this video, you have some questions, thoughts, you want to elaborate on anything, just leave a comment under this video and I'll try and respond back as soon as I can. You'll also find a pinned comment by me with additional links if you do want to support this channel. Shout out credit to Cleo, of course, in recent time for their support on this channel, and even an individual called Gary. It's all good to see. And if you wanna catch up on recent coverage by me, videos on this case and beyond, top right where the eye symbol is, click up there, and you find the drop down box and you can catch up where you missed out on. With that all being said, we might as well get straight into today's video and begin analysing. So here is the first screenshot. This was taken from Facebook Messenger as usual, and it was reposted, reshared on Facebook publicly. The perspectives, well, on the left point of view, the grey box are the responses by Jack Newton himself, and in, in the blue boxes, that's just a, a random person asking questions top profile picture says JN and it's blurred out underneath. That's just basically Jack Newton, his initials. Take in mind there was a time in the past where initials were used, full names were censored. Why exactly? For legal reasons or just because people didn't want to get in trouble online and others had to follow the rules and guidelines of the different pages from Reddit to Facebook. But obviously time is you know, a lot has changed in time. People use full names now. It's a lot easier because there will be people out there with the same initials like Jack Newton's father, Caleb Newton, and Jack Newton's older brother, Colton Newton, both a CN. It can get very confusing, right? Not a problem anymore. So what was the actual question asked to begin with as part of this ongoing discussion. Take in mind, this is an old post. Anyways, I wanted to ask, do you know why Noah Presgrove was dating a 16-year-old? Y'all, a good-looking guy. I feel like he could have easily found someone his own age. See, this to think, 
we can look what Jack has to say in a second. I'm gonna zoom in so it's a bit easier for you. See, when it comes to Noah Presgrove, how old was he at the time? 19 years old. So he's of adult age and he's dating supposedly a 16 year old. Now, obviously that can raise a few eyebrows. Um, I can't remember what the laws are like from country to country or state to state, but you could say it's a little bit of a messy situation. I mean, if you was to up the ages to this 16 year old being a 19 year old and Noah being a 20 something year old, then it wouldn't be frowned upon the same way. And even to an extent beyond. Now, talking in general, not based on this situation of those ages, but if you used to upscale it to a higher age and beyond, and the age difference, with the exception of certain practicalities and factors you've always got to take in mind, at the end of the day, you could come across someone, you may see their personality before anything else, and you may click very well, or you see them in a very positive light, and that surpasses, you know, the positives surpass all the other stuff, making age not as important if it's based off a difference. But other times there might be more practicalities, negatives stacked against the positives. Sometimes you've got to weigh it up. As for Noah Presgrove in his situation, Maybe he just got on really well with that 16-year-old as for the chemistry, the personality and whatnot. But I can understand why some people would be questioning it based off the age difference. One is technically an adult of adult age. The other one is just still a teenager. But could there be a possibility that Noah Presgrove was respectful to his girlfriend at the time, the 16-year-old, no pressure, nothing nothing forced onto them. But in the meantime, Noah felt like if he wanted to do a certain activity that he felt he couldn't do with that 16-year-old, he would do it with someone of his own age or older at the party. Hence possible cheating. Hence why even Noah's family members, such as Ashley Chadwick, the cousin, and Robin Smith, the aunt, said that Noah may have um, done more with Logan Jernigan. I mean, we do have some photos here. Just as an example, this is September 3rd, 2023, which would be Sunday night at 10.50pm. Hopefully, top of the screen, you can make it out just up here. This is supposedly the raw photo or a screenshot or a still video from when Caden Pressey recorded him sat down in that chair, pointing towards a kitchen dining area of the other party guest, including Noah Presgrove, as you see there, with his black shorts, and then other people around. The girl in the white shirt there, Caden's cousin, Georgia, the 15-year-old, and then some other people. Now, there are additional reference points to be made. I mean, just as a still photo, things look rather calm and somewhat quiet. But was it always like that? Could there be other footage out there which we've never seen which shows people in a completely different light and perspective, you never know. But whilst Noah is present here, there are also girls. What was the ratio? It's okay saying there was 30, 40 people at the party at some point. What percentage were males? What percentage were females? If you've got a room full of 50 guys and one girl, could be a little bit dodgy and a bit awkward. <laughs> um, if you had like a bit of a 20-15 ratio, then maybe not as awkward, but it's just trying to put it into perspective that when there's the opposite gender present, then it may open up new opportunities and activities for others who may have certain ideas to engage in, whether it's consensual or not. Was there any issues with that type of theme at this party? I don't know. But when you've got alcohol, when um, there's not many consequences and it's in the moment and you're going with the flow, one thing could lead to another. I mean, a bit slightly out there, you've had the claims by people online about there's a chance 
that Avery was engaging in some kind of inappropriate activity with another person of possibly a, an older age and some associating that with Caleb Newton, Jack Newton's father and Noah walking in on it. Do we have hard evidence and proof of it? No. But just the theme and activity of being intimate with one another, whether you're close, whether you know them, whether you're in a relationship with them or not, things can happen. I mean, as for Jack Newton and Carter, they said they went to bed Sunday night in the same room. That's pretty normal when they're together and they know each other. Fair enough. But when you've got Noah Presgrove wanting to sleep in one of the girls' beds uh, Monday morning after the shower, after supposedly eating food, what, he goes to Avery's, and then he goes to Logan's, or he goes to Logan's, then Avery? Why does Noah want to sleep in one of the girls' beds when he was okay sleeping on the floor Saturday night? Hmm? Though, when Noah was sleeping on the floor Saturday night, he did get to sleep next to Logan. Who wanted it more? And why would Logan sacrifice her own bed where she lives and, and, and choose the floor instead? It, it's just a bit weird or a bit abstract, if you want to put it that way. So, besides that, this person also asks, what did he look like in person on the road? No, Presgrave, the highway. Could you tell it was him, identifiable? Did he have writing on him still or not? Jack responds, Noah wasn't really dating anyone. He was kind of a hoe. Ha ha ha. And then the response is, ha ha ha. Now, when we're referring to a hoe, we're not talking about gardening equipment. We're talking about an individual that may engage with several people all at the same time or back to back with certain activities. Let's put it that way. We don't need a demonstration for that. So when you've got Noah Presgrove, whether it applies to Noah being a hoe at the party or just in general in life, we have heard the references. And I believe it was also mentioned by Caden Pressy himself and maybe some of us along the way that when Noah Presgrove gets drunk, that's when he starts flirting with girls. Does that indicate that he normally doesn't when he's sober? I wonder. Hmm. But yeah, let's just say you got the party. Obviously, you've got alcohol. No, at some point, is obviously drunk. To what extent, who knows? But drunk enough to then become flirty. And if there's enough girls present, is he going from one to another, back and forth, or just focusing on one? Um, was Noah flirty when it came to the shower? Or was he quite out of it? Some say he was out of it. And others have said, well, afterwards, he was jumping about full of activity and energy and teabagging certain people who were asleep, which would probably be the guys. Hmm. So it's worth taking that into mind. Some people made references that Noah was close to Avery or was at some point in the past. Were any sparks being relit once again at the party? Maybe not when supposedly Noah called Avery a bad word, whether it would be a fat beep or something else. Obviously, a little bit of tension. People say that Noah Presgrove, very popular, popular with the girls. We've heard references of that countless times in, in news articles as well. So obviously, the more popular you are, the easier it might be for you to gain access to certain stuff or certain people. As to whether Noah followed through with it or not at the party, who knows? But obviously, the more you engage in and engage with, if there's ever a conflict of interest or you caught up in a, some kind of triangular stranglehold relationship chain with somebody else or you backstab someone you know or a stranger if they find out you could get in trouble you could face certain consequences even if death isn't deserved someone out there may think it is and take it out on Noah if you keep your head down you don't say too much you don't do anything questionable and you you know somewhat respectful then less likely for retaliation but obviously we don't know the true true motive behind all of this so it's still like theory based and the possibilities but it's just weird isn't it because this is like one of the first inconsistencies that Noah wasn't really dating anyone 
which would imply that any type of interaction Noah had at the time, it was just really casual and meaningless. And maybe that's how it is more so nowadays, which is what it is. But at the same time, it can be a bit fucked up too, because if you're in the presence of somebody else, that it should be somewhat special and meaningful. But if it's just, oh, hi, bye, toss aside, move on to the next, pass the parcel, just seems a bit shit, to be honest. But I guess when, once again, you throw in a party and alcohol, you're not quite thinking the same, you lose a bit of self-control and the mindset, and if the others do the same, yeah, things can happen. Well, supposedly they can. But from what, you know, people have said, and wasn't there a point where family members said that Noah wasn't dating anyone, but at the same time he was? A little bit of inconsistency there. Now, where did we hear it from that Noah was dating a 16-year-old? As for the name of the person, I'm not going to say. Well, I could say, but there's two different people, I think. Wasn't one called Nevea, but that was in the past. And then another person's called Phelan. One or the other. And uh, there was discussions about it on Snapchat with Colton and a stranger claiming to be Noah's friend in which they mentioned something about a pregnancy scare that Noah Presgrove did or almost got his 16-year-old girlfriend pregnant at some point. How true is that? I don't know. But to call it a scare would imply they didn't follow through with it or it didn't actually happen, or was there a miscarriage, or did it feel like a person was pregnant but it turned out not to be that, it was another reason. I, I'm not an expert, to be honest, okay? But, and I don't know how true it is. Yeah, it might have been mentioned on Snapchat, but do we have any hard evidence? Nope, not enough. So, I'm just giving you reference points. But there's been a lot of discussion by a range of people over time to say that Noah did have a girlfriend at the time. And to be fair, this is where we can tie in Cade and Pressy that says a completely different thing. Because depending on how you look at it, you could argue and say, Jack Newton, it's quite rich of him to call Noah a hoe, um, when Jack Newton isn't quite clean himself, supposedly. Take in mind, the way Jack words it here, it's more in a joking way. But when it comes to Caden, party goer. He said Saturday at some point 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. Don't know more. I don't know which time exactly a.m. or p.m. but it was 12 as worded by Caden in the private interview that he saw or at least overheard the argument between Noah Presgrove and Jack Newton to do with girl trouble and you know it's understandable. We've heard about it in the past and it sounded like it was Jack who had the problem with Noah. Oh, and then it followed on Monday morning then, boiled over. No, because it seems to be separate occasions. It might still be to do with the theme of girl trouble and backstabbing and stuff like that. But on the Saturday, Caden said Noah was the one to start the argument and yell at Jack. Yelling at Jack for flirting with Noah's 16-year-old girlfriend at the time of the party. Well, maybe, maybe not. Noah didn't bring, or nor did the girlfriend bring herself to the party. She would have been elsewhere. Why did she not come down? I don't know. Maybe busy, maybe didn't want to. Who knows? But... First of all, for Caden to mention about Noah having a girlfriend at the time and as well Jack flirting with Noah's girlfriend, quite eye-opening. Why would Jack do that if Jack is in a relationship himself with Carter Combs? How far does it date back to? That's what you've got to ask yourself. So Jack says Noah didn't really have a girlfriend at the time, didn't have one, wasn't dating anyone. So if you're not dating anyone, then likely you're not going to be in a relationship with anyone at the time. And yet it's Caden about saying Noah had a girlfriend at the time. You can see the inconsistencies, right? And for Jack to call Noah a hoe, a hoe 
I was, I was going to say Noah Hoa. Sorry, it's just tongue twister. <laughs> but if um, Noah is called a hoe, what does that make Jack? Because if Jack's with Carter, or somewhat with Carter at the time, and it was around the same time as when flirting with Noah's girlfriend, is he in a position to be talking himself? Not really. So, that's one of the first key inconsistencies, first of all. And to be honest, you could say there's a bit of playing down to an extent. Not directly, but if you used to interpret it alternatively. If Jack was to play it down and say, Noah wasn't dating anyone, he wasn't seeing, he wasn't in a relationship with anyone. So when it came to Saturday, and when Noah was yelling at me for flirting with his girlfriend, well, Noah wasn't dating her, so she was a free agent, so I could do what I want. So Noah isn't in any position to be telling me, in brackets, Jack off. Oh, damn it, I've just said it again, Jack off. But you, you get what I'm pointing out. I'm doing it a bit like third person, indirect alternative to how it's been played down here. Minimising once again. And why would you do that? Well, if it wasn't minimised, it makes Jack look really bad. You know, Jack best friends with Noah. Noah's got a girlfriend. Jack has one at the time. But instead, Jack decides to go behind Noah's back, possibly, and flirt with Noah's. A betrayal. Being stabbed in the back. Not quite right. And this is still basing off what Caden Pressy witnessed himself. That's why I'm talking in this way. It would make Jack look bad. So, in what way could you worm your way out of it if it did come to light? So, in a different situation, it's come to light. Noah says, how could you, Jack, flirt with my girlfriend? Why would you do that to me? I thought we were friends. And Jack, at the time, and as of present day, well, not quite, but at the time of the screenshot, by saying, yeah, but you're a hoe, Noah. You just go about, you flirt with anyone and everyone. So, does it really matter? You're not exactly committed to anyone, unlike me, supposedly. But, you know... If you're not dating anyone, you're not with anyone, you're not in any relationship, you're not tied with anyone, so that person you claim to be your girlfriend, even though they're not really, then, you know, someone like Jack, as in me, brackets, I, I should be able to go here and go there. And you shouldn't stop me. If you were with them, then I wouldn't go anywhere near them. That could be like the conversation. I'm not directly saying that this literally links to that argument at the time, but... When it comes to playing it down, it's not the first time because at another point, Jack Newton was quick to say, that Saturday argument, well, it was okay in the end. We cried, we hugged, you know, we talked, it was, it was resolved. Why would both parties have to cry and almost like claim some kind of accountability when, from what Caden witnessed, it was more one-sided. Jack did wrong. No, he's giving him a piece of his own mind. Right? So is there a form of manipulative external minimization? You could argue that. Now, scrolling down, the next part is, so you do have a question, but yes, Noah only had two to three visual injuries from what I can remember at the highway. When the trucker told me he wasn't okay, I kind of lost it. And in response, I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I can't even imagine. Right, two to three visual injuries. Now, what would they be? Probably the scalp area where it was torn. As for broken bones and stuff, well, that's internal, you wouldn't see. And in any internal bleeding, you wouldn't see. So what else would be, what are the two other possible visual injuries besides the scalp, the head? Is it something to do with the chest area, the nose, the jaw? And a visual injury, that could be like blood, it could be a scratch, it could be a cut, laceration, a bruise. What do you think it could be? Make sure to leave a comment down below. And the bit about when the trucker told me he wasn't okay, I kind of lost it. Which trucker and at what time? Around or just before 5.15? Four in the morning? Or... 6 a.m.? Depends, doesn't it? Because you got Tyler Tyler Hardy 
that were around there roughly 543 onwards. That was the pair of truckers or drivers. But then before 543, around 515 and a bit onwards and also before that, there was another set of truck drivers, the ones Cade and Pressy came across. With the same ones that um, Jack Newton came across earlier on in the day. And the truck uh, said it wasn't looking good. Makes you think, doesn't it? Now, following on with the text conversation, we move on to another theme of questions and answers. Um, in no particular order, first of all, Jack says, I looked at Noah as a brother and he wasn't injured after the side-by-side -side wreck. There was like five other people on it with him. So the first positive consistency is the number five. There were five other people, passengers, with Noah, making it a total of six. Now, could six people fit in a side-by-side? -side? We'll get to that in a second. But the video that I did last night, which was looking at text conversation between Justin Roy and Jack Newton in the past, the number five came up there as well. So that's what we're trying to look for. It's okay seeing all the inconsistencies with Jack, but is there any possible truths and consistencies with other things? And that seems to be the case here with how many people were in the side by side, which is kind of eye-opening. Could the amount of people lead to why it rolled over? That's another thing we'll look at shortly. However, it's undone with a level of inconsistency when it says he wasn't injured after the side-by-side -side wreck. Really? How would Jack know when he was supposedly asleep? How would he know? He wouldn't know firsthand, would he? Oh, but Caden Pressy would. Well, some people say he wouldn't either. But we need to look at it with a form of common sense. The only way to know whether Noah was injured after the side-by-side -side is if either A, you were physically there to see it in the moment as a witness, or B, you saw hard, bloody evidence. And when it comes to Caden Pressy, you know, let's not forget, a lot of people look up to Caden, and a lot of people believe in him and say that he's very consistent. But maybe with time, a lot of people have gone rather quiet with Caden when it comes to references, quotes, and timestamps. And yet when it comes to me, I've been consistent with it, even at times when people have said that I was wrong, but I was just simply relaying and remembering what Caden said himself in different interviews and statements. Very interesting how one of the most, in the right way, one of the most critical individuals such as myself remains most consistent with Caden and his recollection of stuff. Hmm. But anyway, when it comes to Caden and the private interview with police, he said he didn't physically see it firsthand, but he did, because at the time when it did happen, he was asleep. But Caden did say at a later point, a guy from the party at a later point showed Caden the photo of the side-by-side -side rollover and Noah injured. And a video that showed the person walking up to Noah, recording his face and the rollover. I mean, what else do you want? For other people out there to say maybe the side-by-side -side rollover never happened... Well, if you're saying that, then indirectly, you're basically saying that Caden Pressy is a liar. Let's be realistic. It might sound like I'm being dark, but I'm being realistic. Because Caden said in his own words, he saw evidence, hard evidence of the rollover. If you're presented a relevant video and or a photo which clearly uh, depicts Noah in the scene, in the moment, or just after it, with a bloodied nose and a visible rollover of a side-by-side -side on the correct day and time, well, with the timestamp too, what more do you want? Because the only other thing, the next or the best thing would be to physically be there in the moment. Caden didn't have that opportunity because he was asleep. But if you're shown video footage of that event at the time of when you were asleep and you're reflecting back on it, you're 
watching it at a later point, not in real time, but you're looking at solid hard evidence which was recorded in real time during the event, is that not a good enough? I just want to know people's outlook on it, those that don't think the side-by-side -side occurred, or those that say, you know, when it comes to Caden, he was only told this and that, just like how Brooke Bounds Carter and Sarah Long were told this and that by Jack Newton. There is a difference between verbal communication and passing on a message which you're supposed to believe and trust in as evidence, the truth, and then the difference to being shown physical, hard evidence, visual, auditory, or both, of a particular event. If you're shown hard evidence, you're not just, you know, being told this happened or that happened. You're being shown what happened visually, auditory. It's that simple, right? But maybe not everybody sees it the same way. I mean, when it comes to the Kenny Veach case, I'll give you an example right now. If I said to you, believe me, Kenny Veach is alive. I saw it. I witnessed it. The end. Oh, I'm just telling you and you're supposed to believe in that. Not good enough, is it? And then when you pass it on to others, people are going to question you and say, well, where's the proof? Where's the evidence? You're just stating it because it's something that you've been told like a puppet. But if we change the situation about and we say, you know what, I'm going to tell you something. No, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to speak to you. I'm going to let the actions do the work. I'm going to show you the hard evidence. Here's the CCTV footage. Here's a missed phone call. Here's some audio, this and that. And then what do you do with it? You can talk about it or you can repost the clip, the video and beyond. There's a difference between being told something happened and then being shown what happened with hard evidence. There is a difference, a big one. But still, people don't seem to see it. Anyway, when referring back I wish it wouldn't flick off the bloody screen. It pisses me off. Damn device. But to say, I looked at Noah as a brother. Interesting. But would a brother go behind someone else's back and possibly flirt and cheat? I wonder. Anyway, separate thing. To refer back to the side-by-side, -side, Noah wasn't injured after the side-by-side. -side. What else is consistent with that? Carter Combs, indirectly, by saying Noah was just simply dirty and needed a, a shower, a wash. He would want one himself if he ever got dirty. No acknowledgement of injuries. Brooke Bounds Carter, I can't remember if she mentioned if Noah was injured or not, but Sarah Long or Stevie Howard, on the other hand, mentioned something about a busted lip. Well, Caden never mentioned anything about a busted lip. Caden Pressey, when shown the photo and possibly the video, because he did make reference to a video, so he must have seen it to know about it, that Noah visibly had a bloodied, injured nose. To what extent is irrelevant? An injury is an injury. If Caden Pressey saw hard evidence of the event or the after effects of the event, and it clearly showed Noah a little bit injured, then clearly Noah must have been injured. But was the injury not that serious, hence why the likes of Jack doesn't even acknowledge it? Well, denies it. And um, as for Carter, just doesn't even acknowledge it whatsoever. I mean, if these are all so-called friends or brothers, not literally, best friends and whatnot, then if Noah is injured, even to a small extent, shouldn't there be a level of concern or at least acknowledgement? Oh, Noah, you're bleeding. Uh, do you need washing down? Do you need a plaster or, or a bandage or some say a band-aid? But no, that doesn't seem to be the case. Just, ah, uh, Noah's a bit dirty. Yeah, he's got blood coming from his nose, whether it's a lot or not. We just don't mention that. No, 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 we don't talk about that. We're just focusing on all the dirt on Noah's body. I think an injured nose is more important than he'd seen to before a dirty body, don't you? And yeah, it's just not being acknowledged. So... Jack says Noah isn't injured, Carter indirectly agrees, and yet Caden says that Noah was injured after the side-by-side -side rollover. So who's telling the truth? Jack, who's receiving second, third-hand information, because he also claims to be asleep at the time of the rollover, or Caden Pressey, 
who was asleep at the time, but he did get shown hard evidence footage of it. Now, was Jack Newton ever showed that photo or video, what Caden saw as well? Because if so, then why would Jack be downplaying it then compared to what Caden Pressey saw? See, this is the thing. You can have a painting or a drawing in general or for someone. You show it to one person, they may come out with a certain description. You show it to another individual, they may elaborate and go in deeper. People react differently to seeing the same thing. Could that be the case here? But in this situation, one downplays it, the other one tells the truth. So that's what needs to be looked into. And before we even get to the shower, just the fact of who was present during the side-by-side, -side, this is an example. This is not relevant to the one at the party, but isn't it a coincidence that you've got a side-by-side -side and next to it you've got a bloody boat of some sort? And just in terms of the theme of that, one of the reasons behind the side-by-side -side and possibly another vehicle being sold or more so put up for being sold on the Facebook marketplace after Noah's death was to get enough money to be able to afford a boat for fishing, Warwick Lake, who knows? People thought that, well, by selling the side-by-side, -side, another stuff could be because Noah was the last one to use it or when Noah used it, it was close relevant to the party and possibly to the death, so Jack didn't want it tracing back or being questioned, so it's just best getting rid of it, moving it on, like nothing happened. But surely if you sell it online, it can be traced or tracked, or at least documented and archived. You wanted to get rid of it in a dodgy way, you'd probably be doing it in hand with cash, possibly, no questions, not enough answers, and just move it along. Not to destroy it, that'd be too obvious. To pass it on discreetly, and in hopes someone will buy it, snatch it quick. But from what Jack said, when it was put on the Facebook marketplace, it wasn't bought immediately. It took some months. So obviously, if it's taken months, there's not enough urgency to get rid of it. So if you're quite okay with just letting it sit there and wait, well, then maybe there's not much to hide and it's not as relevant to the death of Noah, possibly. Or there's a strong level of confidence that it wouldn't link back to this side by side. So even if it may have been linked, there's not enough evidence that ties back to it. So there's no reason to be doing anything drastic or rash because you're in the clear. Different ways of looking at it, right? Once again, this is just an example photo. I don't have the photo of the side by side. If anyone does, feel free to drop a comment and let me know your thoughts. The main reason behind this was the seating arrangement because people say like the roll bars or the cage on the inside to keep things secure and I guess keep yourself within so you don't fall out or wobble, I'm guessing. Side-by-sides can vary, of course. Some may have more seats than others. Typically, when I think of a side-by-side, -side, it's like a two-seater one, possibly. Um, but five people with Noah. So you've got the vehicle, just imagine it right now at the party around 2.40 a.m. Monday morning. Driver's seat, you got Noah Presgrove. Who's by the side of him as the passenger? Is it Brylan Sweat? Is it Isaac Rojas? Mikey Lair? And who else? Because what you got to understand, and in all fairness, it just gets a little bit messy. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm sorry if my stomach is rumbling. I've just not had any food right now. So if you wonder if there's an earthquake, it's just my stomach rumbling. Sorry, Sharon. Is your stomach rumbling as well? I don't, I don't know. You get some food, man. But in all seriousness, it's trying to keep up with everything. It's okay maybe saying, well, maybe Brylan was in the side-by-side -side during the rollover. Maybe Isaac and uh, Mikey Lair was and some others. But you've got to take in mind, if Caden Pressy was asleep at the time of the rollover, and it just so happened that Brylan Sweat, Isaac Rojas and Mikey Lair were all asleep as well next to Caden then who else could it possibly be then in the side-by-side? -side? You can't have someone in two places at once, right? See, this is what I'm assuming, that 
when Caden Pressy woke up at 2.42, visibly, Isaac, Mikey, Brylan were all asleep. And whilst, yes, from 2.42 in comparison to the next time Caden woke up 5.15, two of the guys, Mikey Lair and, is it Brylan or Isaac, switched places from floor to the couch, sofa, recliner, whatever you want to call it, a piece of furniture. Places were switched, which is a bit of a mystery, but that's after the side-by-side -side rollover. So do you get what I'm saying? Based off the timestamp which Caden referenced, 2.40 a.m. Monday morning, five to six people, as quoted by Jack Newton. Yes, two different, like, people talking about the same thing. Um, Caden mentions the time when it supposedly happened, and Jack mentions who was involved indirectly within the accident rollover. Noah seems to be the main consensus. Whether Noah was with people or alone, it was Noah in the side-by-side -side and when it rolled over, and there is photo video proof of that. But if there truly are other passengers on board, five to six people, the question of, can they fit on? Does it lead to any complications, hence why it flipped over? And, most importantly, who would even be on it as passengers? You probably think, oh, probably typical guys, right? Trying to impress girls because the girls are not stupid enough to do something like this or they're busy doing other things. They don't want to get dirty, muddy, whatever. Yeah, fine. But how many of the guys and what guys could you think of who could be in this? Because if you refer back to Caden Pressy's account of stuff, when it came to Sunday... Sunday going into the afternoon evening time. It was Caden, Jack, Noah, Brylan, Isaac, Mikey, I'm not too sure, and anyone else. A group of guys going out in the Ford Ranger, Jack's vehicle, which probably has more seats, more space and room, driving about in one of the fields nearby, shooting at animals, a guy activity, messing about, having fun, even if it's not quite right, shooting animals in that way, they're doing what they're doing, right? Familiar names and faces who we're aware of. So when you think of the side-by-side -side rollover, just so happens to be five to six people, that's the same um, um, fingers I counted as in Caden's recollection of the Sunday drive about when shooting animals. So whoever was in the Ford Ranger, so uh, Caden, Jack, Noah, uh, Brylan, Isaac, and maybe Mikey, that's about five, six people, which is the same number um, what we see here. Five in the side-by-side. -side. So basically, the people that were in the shooting... The, of the animals on Sunday, was it the same people in the side-by-side -side on the Monday? Well, you could say, yeah, sounds pretty common sense, doesn't it? But we've got the problem, haven't we? Because at least five, four or five out of the six were bloody asleep, supposedly. So if you used to group those that were present and all together with Noah on the Sunday in that Ford Ranger to the Monday event of the rollover, it just wouldn't apply. Because the likes of the, uh, the, the Brylan Sweats, the Isaac Rojas, the Caden Presses, the Jack Newton, all supposedly asleep, right? Well, Caden more consistently, appeared to be asleep up to a certain point. Two minutes after the rollover, waking up because his mum called, which is very interesting, and supposedly seeing Jack awake inside. Yet Jack said he was asleep. So there's a bit of inconsistency there. So if Jack wasn't asleep and he was awake, did he know about the side-by-side? -side? Was he a passenger himself? Who knows? But 
let's refer back to a bit more consistency. If Caden was asleep during the side-by-side -side activity, the rollover, and Caden was asleep next to Brylan, Isaac, and Mikey, well, those four guys couldn't be involved in this side-by-side -side rollover, could they? So you've got Noah, and then you've got four to five other party people. Well, how many were at the party at the time? Got to acknowledge that as well. What did they say? About 10 to 15 people were at the party Sunday night going into Monday morning. That's what some claim. Caden Pressy said Sunday night there was actually 40 people. But then in the private interview, Caden said actually it was Friday and Saturday night when there was 40 people. So I don't know what to believe there. But let's just say that Sunday night going into Monday morning, because supposedly the side-by-side -side occurred early Monday morning, and by then it's probably just more so familiar faces, a smaller group of people, it would make it a bit easier, wouldn't it? But it also makes it a bit difficult, because hopefully people can follow me. It's, it's a rather deep video, this, but just clip moments if it helps you or it can be used in the future as reference points but the smaller the pool of people present it makes it harder to determine who could be involved in the side-by-side -side rollover and people could argue and say how can it be harder you got fewer people easier to work with easier to pinpoint who was present and who wasn't but then you've also run the risk and issue of when Jack says five to six people in the side-by-side, -side, is that really the truth or is it a lie? Is it simply an exaggeration or a complete lie as in it was just Noah driving? If it was just Noah driving, that could have other implications as in what was his motive and aim behind the side-by-side? -side. If Noah was with a group of guys, that could be a different reason and motive to why, what they were going to do. I mean, people could say, well, that's side by side, whether there was passengers inside or not, or just Noah, and it was done to impress girls at the party. Well, was that the same thing that was done when the group of guys on Sunday were coming back and they drove over a gap or a hole or something and flew over it and it was kind of cool, as Caden referenced? Were any girls present to see that? Don't think so. Was there a round of applause from the girls, party goers? No. So... They still did it, they still thought it was cool, it was fun, but it wasn't all for the girls' attention. Would it be any different for the side-by-side -side rollover then, Monday morning? Makes you think. But to refer back to the pool of people present, the party-goers. So, as for who's on screen right now, you got Georgia. And we'll try and identify each one. You got Georgia, white top. Jack Newton, near to the Christmas tree. Then in the background, either Logan Jernigan and or Jasmine Millan or Carter Combs. Noah Presgrove, black shorts. Then on the left, in the black shorts, a female, blonde hair, ponytail. Who is that? I have no bloody clue. Is it Stephanie Millan? It can't be Shandy, because they were there only Saturday. Then on the far left, you got another person sat down, and then another person just in the corner. Who are they as well? Gender-wise, not too sure. Now, there was supposedly a reference that there is proof that Stephanie Millan was at the party and she's on shot in camera right now on the far left-hand side. It's not exactly easy to see or identify, but if that's really the case, and that's kind of interesting. So why would it be that Stephanie Millan, out of all the other party girls that were present on the prime day of things evolving and happening, why has she gone so under the radar? Because she's truly innocent? That'd be a good thing, right? But how come others aren't then? Why'd it only be Stephanie Millan that's under the radar, who's also a party goer and present at the key time of when things started unfolding? That's what I find hard to believe. So if I had to count on my hands when working out who's present here and Caden Pressy behind the phone, 
I'm going to take in mind this was 10.50 p.m., which would mean Sunday night, um, September 3rd. And who you see there, the people, are any of the people there Texas boys or from more, more strangers than familiar faces, I wonder? Because in this footage, I don't know who that guy is in the jeans, the black top and the black hat. Is that Isaac Rojas? Is it someone else? I mean, just from this angle, I can't see clearly Brylan Sweat or Avery. I can't clearly see um, like possibly Travis or Colton or a skinny guy or JJ. Don't see them. I don't visually see Mikey Lair whatsoever. They might be in a different room. They're not all gonna be in one place, are they? Could be spread about if the room's big enough and outside too you've got to take that into mind so with that roughly said if we go back to the side by side and the seating if there are enough seats in the vehicle who could possibly be the passengers if there's five to six people present at least five nowhere being the driver that would make it six who are the other five people well it can't be Caden because he was asleep at the time it can't be Brylan Isaac or Mikey because they were asleep at the time so who's bloody left Jack Newton well Jack Newton was supposedly asleep as well unless he was a passenger it's hard to know so who's left then the girls that's all it seems to be. You can't have people in two places at once. Like, I, I could understand the likes of Brylan, Mikey, Isaac, Caden being with Noah in the side-by-side -side rollover. But if Caden says he was asleep, he was asleep, so he couldn't have participated. And as Caden made reference that the guys around him, who I've just mentioned, were also asleep. So they can't be in two places at once. So either it means it's a completely different set of people that were with Noah in the side-by-side, -side, which would more likely be the girls, because who else remains at the party then? What other named individuals can you think of who are males that were present at the party Monday morning, besides Jack, besides Caden, Brylan, Isaac, Mikey? Who else would it be? Travis? Colton? JJ? Some skinny person? Those? Would it be those people? Or could it be some of the girls? But then again, no girl has come forward and said that I'm a passenger. I was present. Okay, you, he you heard about Carter and Jasmine afterwards, after the event, helping and assisting. But they weren't involved in the rollover. So who else could be? At the end of the day, there's two ways of looking at it, top of my head, that... What Jack says about five people being present is a lie. And it might have just been Noah by himself. Or Noah and one other person. Possibly. Now. If it was true. Then it would have implications with Caden Pressy to an extent. Because... Indirectly speaking, if Caden was asleep, but the other guys may have participated around him, the Brylan, the Isaac, the Mikeys, which is hard to believe, but possibly, because some have made reference to Brylan Sweat being involved in the side-by-side, -side, even though he was supposed to be asleep and Caden said that he was asleep, but somehow it happens. Well then, for that to happen, likely it would have had to have occurred maybe earlier on for it to still be consistent with Caden's timeline. Uh, but then... It wouldn't be consistent with the time stamp of what Caden saw at the time of the rollover, which was 2.40 a.m. Because two minutes later, Caden wakes up because his mum calls him. And when Caden's awake, he clearly sees that the other guys are asleep around him. But he also states that Noah and Jack and Jasmine are inside near the beer pong table. How can all these people be in two places at once or close together? Just not possible. But if we refer to the private interview where Caden said he didn't see Noah, he just assumed he was at the house inside, well, that could mean that's probably the time of when, what, Noah was still outside or in the bathroom by then? 
but it doesn't really help explain who was a passenger, though. Not quite. Who else could be a passenger in the side-by-side? -side? A total of five mystery passengers when four of the familiar faces, guys, were asleep. Who else remains? Who else at the party at the time that could have gone into the side-by-side? -side? This is messed up completely. This is a complete catastrophic disaster. This is supposed to be a simple event. Obviously didn't end positively, but still a separate event from, you know, the death of Noah. And, you know, some people could say, well, maybe the side-by-side -side rollover was actually the death or it was done as a cover-up and it was altered. Um, how the story is told, how it's talked about and minimised. Oh, it was just, it was just dirty, that was all. I mean, he may have had an injury, but that was it. He was still alive and awake. Is that so? Well, ultimately, you would know with the shower footage if he was still alive then and then that would help reinforce the side-by-side. -side. But for those that still question it till this day, having known what Caden has said by seeing video or at least a photo of it and Noah still being alive, then people that question it would be indirectly once again calling Caden a liar. You see how it goes? Yeah. So beside the passenger situation identifying them and the timing of it, it's how do people fit on? Two people inside, two people on the back, Inside or on the outside? Another person on the side holding on to one of the roll cages, the bar or the roof? It makes you think, doesn't it? Now, if more people were on one side, sitting in the seats or hanging on the side of the vehicle, because of that weight distribution, it's not balanced, meaning it's going to tilt more one side than the other. So when Noah is driving about for whatever length of time it is, because we don't actually know how long it lasted, whilst we didn't find out where he would have gone if he didn't roll over, in terms of from the moment he got into the side-by-side, -side, where did he drive to and for how long until it rolled over? That's the question. I don't know if we'll get an answer or not. But once Noah is driving about, possibly doing a sharp turn or going in and out, kind of like that movement like a snake, but then the vehicle starts rocking and the momentum is gained, and whether it's directly caused by the people, the passengers rocking the vehicle themselves, or just being poorly distributed inside or about, leaning more on one side than the other, which creates an imbalance and that momentum shift, so when Noah turns the wrong way, it causes everything to roll over. Possibility. As for how fast Noah was going, don't know. I think it might have been mentioned by, was it, was it by Brooke? Was it by Stevie? Was it Stevie? Casually saying it, it kind of rolled over in slow motion. It wasn't that big of a deal. Can you roll over in a slow way? I mean, if you're driving slow and you really do a hard turn and you're on a bit of a slant or uneven ground, you could possibly roll over. If the pasture is rather flat, are you likely to tip over then, roll over? Mm. Well, if you're going at a slow speed but you've got enough people inside or hanging on to the side-by-side -side and they're rocking it, shaking it, and no turns, that could be enough to cause it to roll over. Not enough damage done because of the speed you're going at, but still, that momentum. Well, if that happened, then it, it would mean that Noah isn't all at fault and that the passengers are just as responsible, if not more, for recklessness. But we don't have proof or hard evidence of who's identifiable, how are they positioned in the side-by-side, -side, what speed the vehicle was going at, how long for until it rolled over, and whether there was additional momentum used or not. And the flatness of the terrain. 
there are questions along the way. What we should do now is acknowledge the other part of the conversation here where it says, is it true that Noah was showered by someone or some people? Why exactly did they give him a shower if so? It's kind of strange, but I guess if he needed one, then it makes sense. Jack responds, no one had to completely give him a shower. So no one had to physically wash Noah down, but there was people present at least to assist in some way. Hmm. Noah was just drunk and stumbling. He wasn't the only one they showered. They were dirty from flipping the side by side. Consistent with what Carter Combs has stated, where another buddy of Noah, a guy supposedly, jumped on into the shower with Noah. But who could that guy be? If people said, well, it's Brylan and Sweat, how can it be Brylan and Sweat when the rollover occurred at 2.40, Cade and Pressy's asleep at that time, two minutes later wakes up and notices the likes of Brylan, Isaac, Mikey and them lot are still asleep near to him. Can't be in two places at once. Can't move that quick, can you? No, it's not possible. That's what the issue is. So it must be another guy, another buddy to Noah. But who else... What other male would be a friend to know? If it's not Jack, who else? When the other friends, the other guys are asleep. What other male is there? Is it JJ? Is it Travis? Is it Colton? Is it some stranger? I don't know. It's just weird. But the language as well, how it's worded here. No one had to completely give him a shower, but some form of physical contact was made to wash him to an extent. Right? To say um, no one had to, no one, meaning more than one person consistent with what we've heard Carter and Jasmine. But was Jack aware and was okay with his girlfriend being present to assist Noah there? Hmm. It's consistent with Noah being drunk and stumbling, needing assistance there, consistent with what Carter has said, kind of consistent indirectly with what Jack's saying here. But then to say, Noah wasn't the only one they showered. Is that a contradiction to say no one had to completely give him a shower? But by the way, Noah wasn't the only one to have been showered. Yeah. It kind of sounds like Noah was washed down to an extent. And then from there on, Noah continued washing himself. So not a complete wash down, not in the bell region, not down below washing in between, underneath and round the back and in the cracks, nothing like that. May have been just washing the shoulder area or the back where Noah may find it hard to reach, possibly. Hmm. I mean, it's not consistent, though, because what Carter says is, we didn't wash Noah, we just stood there and made sure that he stood up and didn't fall over. That was it, nothing else happened. But Jack is saying that the girls did wash Noah down to an extent, physical contact made, and the other person as well that joined on him. Hmm. We've got to take in mind that what Jack says here, he's not revealing the names of those present washing Noah. We've been told it's Jasmine and Carter. Does Jack know that? Did he know it at the time of when texting this? I wonder. Because it was some point in the past where there was a claim that it was Brylan and Sweat washing Noah down. What? He's supposed to be asleep. Hmm. But yeah, makes you think. What else do we have? We're talking eating throughout that weekend or just straight eating, drink, what? Drinking, y'all. We didn't miss a meal. Interesting. They didn't miss a meal, is that Sam? Well, don't really matter too much. Do we have like an example photo? Yeah, so I probably should have shown this, but sometimes I get carried away with the narration. This is the bathroom area, and I believe it's just on the side. So I think the layout of this is on the left, you got the sink, okay, next to Noah's body. Behind over the shoulder, you got the mirror where Travis Monson took his selfie, if you remember, and the backdrop being that patterned curtain on the right, on the right there. Then in the background, I think you've got some toilet paper, right? Um, for other language or slang for people from the UK, you've got some bog roll back there. And then around the corner, you'll have the toilet, likely. 
out of sight because of privacy in a way. But there's no door, it's just like an all-in-one bathroom. Then, as I mentioned, the sheeting, which is up against the bloody door. What the hell's going on there? So when you open the door into the bathroom, the door's going to collide with the bath and shower sheet. Bloody hell. Anyway, supposedly, I think, I'm not confident, like it could be on the right side. If you got like a curtain there, you'd be thinking it's probably a shower one. So it's on the right side of Jack, just out of sight. Okay. Near to the door. Enough space for multiple people to be present, or several, more so. Hmm. Noah's inside the shower. Some have witnessed footage of it, but it only showed the back of Noah. He wasn't saying much, and he was kind of hunched over. That was pretty much it. Sounds very uneventful. Doesn't sound that positive. Doesn't sound that special. Why would you need to record it, and who would? You got Jasmine, you got Carter. Did one of the two girls decide to record it? Did Jasmine think, oh, I'll record this because why not just for the sake of it? Just like how later at 3.41, I do the Snapchat post and say, well, no is missing with a smiley face. Not thinking of the consequences at the time, just doing it. Who knows? We don't actually know who was behind the camera when supposedly the shower footage took place. And what was the motive behind doing it? What's the purpose? Oh, we'll, we'll take a video or a photo of Noah because we can see his body, we can see his muscles, his back, his definition and tone. Ooh, is that what they're thinking? Or did they just think it was funny? Well, if, if that's what they felt, it was funny to record it, why only then? Why not when the other guy jumped on in and then Noah and the guy was laughing? Shouldn't that be recorded more than just Noah being hunched over by himself? When you're trying to... Find a reason. It's still dodgy at the end of the day, recording a person who's unclothed in a shower. Even if you are close with one another, to record it with or without the consent of the other person and then to post it online afterwards, yeah, it's just a bit dodgy, in my opinion. Hmm. So... Let me know your thoughts if you've got any additional points regarding this. I'm just using this photo as an example. This photo wasn't taken at the time of the shower. It was much earlier on, supposedly at 1.50 a.m., right? Noah still has writing on his body. How much of that writing would have gone after Noah had that shower? It makes you think. So, what else do we need to acknowledge here? Mm, didn't miss a meal. Does that apply to everyone exactly? I think we might have another slide, the final one. E yes, okay. Let's just see what this is. We didn't miss a meal. We didn't just stay drunk all weekend. Fair enough. Or have big parties every day. Right, to say that you didn't have big parties every day could imply that at least one of the days you did. Hmm? Also, Jack says, we were just a little group of friends hanging out and going to the river and stuff. And then that night, other people got invited because it was a holiday and birthday. Wait. So you mean Sunday night going into Monday morning, there were 30 to 40 people possibly that came on down because of Avery's birthday and with Avery being a bit of an older age and the contacts and friends she has, that's why they came on down and there was like um, an indirect invite or a welcome and we've been Labor Day too. Yeah, I get that. But the problem is we don't know what day the 30, 40 people actually attended the party. Caden said Sunday. Maybe that's what Jack's getting at here. But then Caden also said Friday, Saturday was the actual time of when the 40 people came on down. And that would have been before Labor Day. It would have been before the birthday of Avery. So what the hell's going on, right? The bit about we're just a little group of friends hanging out. Right, that can be consistent with Saturday and with what Caden has said in his public interview, at least. Fair enough. Going down to the river and stuff. Hmm. We might have to look at that sometime. Because 
no events I've heard elsewhere of a river, as like other guest party goers, Caden, etc. But there was a few people on and off in my chat during my video saying an expert or someone stated that you need to go down to the river or you need to go down to the area where there's buildings and check there. You get what I'm saying? And Jack says, we went down to the river. Is there a link? Who knows? Now, in response, this individual says, those guys from Texas, right? Do you think they were cool or were they strange? Didn't they hit a pig on the way home, but it really turned out to be Noah? Oh, no, it's, it's this, isn't it? Jack says, honestly, I'm not sure. I'm just trying to let the police work. Well, even though we don't know the names, Texas boys. Like how I said, if the other close friends and familiar faces were asleep and the girls had no part in the side-by-side -side rollover as for engaging as a passenger, then what other males would be present besides Jack, who may or may not have been asleep at the time? It would have to be Texas boys. Now, are they strangers to Noah or are they friends to Noah? At least maybe one of them might be if they join Noah in the shower afterwards. Get what I'm saying? Possibility. And as for the individual that supposedly hit a hog or an animal, um, maybe question or doubt it, or maybe it's a person, I think that was debunked in the end, but it still goes about now. I did do a bit of coverage of it on my channel previously. If you want to check it out for a bit more context, feel free to do so. With, um, I think the name mentioned as well. Is he Chris or something? But yeah, these are all the text. I think today it's been quite a heavy, deep video. What this goes to show yet again, right, you might see pre-existing stuff. It's been talked about in the past and covered, or just at least visually has been noted, and even by myself. Yet what I read back then and how I analysed it is completely different to what's been done today. And that's because along the way, other things have been learned from elsewhere. And yeah, you do get different timestamps or accounts of stuff by a range of different people. Can it even be glued together in a particular order? Not always, because it can be conflict. But if there's no exact time given, but just a description of the event, then you can compare, contrast. And just based off that, there are still inconsistencies and maybe possible lies as well, whether it be relationship situation with Noah, with what Jack states compared to what Kane says, whether it be the injuries or lack of them from what Jack says compared to what Kane says compared to what Carter says, and then the shower situation as well, and then whether Noah had passengers or not. It's a mess. And I know people said, and I mentioned at the start of this video, that let's highlight all the lies and all the BS first. Is it possible? Does it have to be done in an order? Or does it feel like a losing battle? Like, if it got to a situation where all of the lies came to a head and stopped because there was nothing more that could be said or done, then yeah, you could just start going through it, filtering, organising and trying to work it all out. But at least with this case, it's not reached ahead. It's still ongoing and there could still be more shifts and turns in the future lies, misdirection, you know, you think you sorted it and then more waves come on in and it's just filling back up once again. It's like if you're in a boat with a hole and there's water coming in, yeah, you can get a bucket, you can solve the problem and throw it away. It comes back round underneath and back through that hole. Nothing you can do about it. All you can do is get that hole and plug something in. But if what you're plugging into the hole isn't wide enough, big enough, it's gonna be pointless. You pop it in, it's gonna pop back out with the force of bullshit and lies. You need to find a level of balance in which the plug has the same resistance, if not more, to push back, to hold back the floodgates. Or if you're on a boat, hold back the uh, submergence, if that's what you call it. You get something thick enough with the hole, plug it in like that, it's not going anywhere, is it? A finger isn't gonna do, a thumb isn't gonna do, two fingers 
Not good enough. Maybe for some, but for most part of it, no. The whole force needs to hold it back. So in a case like this, with ongoing things, what you could stop is just listening or looking or blocking, but it's still going on somewhere else. And that's a problem. I don't think you can stop the lies or the BS. You can organize it, you can sort it out, but whilst doing it, you're gonna get more and more things coming along the way, piling up, and it's just gonna feel like an endless battle. So if there is ever a time where time stands still, that's when probably action is taken. And as I said, there might be other lies or BS which hasn't been looked at just yet or quite identified and I'm kind of like doing that along the way. And once again, there are more important elements as in the actual death, the actual motive and the evidence or lack of it. We need to focus on that. But all the stuff beforehand needs to be sorted as well, possibly sorted first. And that's proven to be a bit of um, a struggle. If this is difficult and messy, then the actual main event is going to be even worse, right? But as some have mentioned in the background, there is some evidence here or proof of this there, which can help. But if you haven't seen it publicly, which most people haven't, then it's going to be hard to believe in. So in the meantime, you just look elsewhere, tie up loose ends and try and find alternative stuff to come up with a theory a concept which could be true or have some accuracy to what could happen next. Who knows? But definitely worthwhile doing this. This was like an indirect viewer requested video. Hopefully works out this time. But with that being said, I just wanted to relay my thoughts and what I remember in this case. Everything that's been talked about today has been in here. No notes no papers, no words, with the exception of those little text messages. I've noticed enough um, inconsistencies, things not quite gelling well. And the reason why it's obviously very interesting is because someone like Caden Pressey, who is best friends or was with Jack Newton, and you see now how that connection has gone with time, it doesn't sound too well, but there we go. So at the end of the day, hopefully you found the video somewhat interesting. And if you did, be sure to hit the like button, thumbs up and share this video to spread the awareness. Hopefully enough people see this video. I know it follows the same theme from yesterday, but we've gone a lot deeper this time round. I might have to change the title a bit just so it's refreshing and you know people actually identify it as a new video because it, it really is, and the discussions and maybe some questions which haven't been mentioned before. And anyone that did watch or is catching Gob, you can always clip anything within this video as a reference point for the future. It might help. And if you, if you are watching late, just rewind back to the beginning, make sure not to miss out. And leave your comments below, your thoughts, whether you agree or disagree with what I've said today. And if you want to set the record straight or clear up any mistakes, feel free. I'd be appreciated. My name is Warlight Raf. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Good night for now.